<laughs> we record it. Yeah, don't get oh, no. You've no. got to do it for camera a little okay. bit. Okay. It's this one. Yeah. yeah okay. I think so. Are you? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Hey everyone, my name's Claire, also known as a Naked Warrior, and I've got a very, very special guest uh, on the sofa with me today. Let me introduce you to Glenn, also known as Tiny of Proper Life Fitness also better known as the man behind the camera and the man behind making everything happen for, for me. He is my husband, he is my rock, but that's probably a bit too gushy for everyone. He's joining me on the sofa today because we're going to go through some questions. Is that right? Yes, I'm like Mr. Naked Warrior. Yeah, this is no. Mr. Naked Warrior. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, it's fair, I have to say, it's the first time I've been in front of the camera. It's very, very bright, isn't it? Now you know I have that well, glaze. Now that I'm looking at you, I've just got white lights <laughs> everywhere. So, um, so we're doing, this is age, or wisdom as I like to call it. Um, we thought it would be fun, we've had some questions that have come through on all the different social media channels. So both Instagram, which is predominantly where, obviously, Claire underscore The Naked Warrior is yeah. at, and also on the YouTube channel. And we, we sort of we decided that we might do a, the top 10 questions that keep on coming up, because they keep on coming up. So I thought we would do these to Claire and then if I think there's anything that is worth putting my background into yes then is yeah. that alright yeah yeah you can put your two so, pennies worth in <laughs> I, I'm also a personal performance coach a human performance coach um, I'm ex-forces I deal with more um, high-end athletes or people that are kind of maybe competing strongman um, powerlifting powerlifting uh, I'm known for maybe deadlift correction or the compound lift correction guy, mm. um, but also I have I train women. I also have uh, fit. Um, you have fit, fit, fit women. <laughs> but, well. but I also have unfit men that want to be fit again. Uh, so I'm in my early fifties, and they all kind of want to look a little bit more fit and everything else. So uh, I think Claire and I are sometimes a bit aspirational for people that have maybe gone off the wagon from fitness and want to come back to it. Don't know what they're doing, so we kind of. Put them back on track, really. I think that's probably the best mm, way, isn't it? Yeah. So, question number one. You re you haven't seen all of these. No, I I know there's a lot of questions that come through, and that was the whole point of trying to bring this together so we could answer them to you guys all all together. Um, it's the first time I'm seeing those, so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's okay. go. So, question. Well, they're not in any particular order, I think. So, okay. um, so thank you for everyone that's having the questions. If you have any questions at all, or you want to add your comments to our our questions. Uh, please comment below as well. We'll do them in the commenty bits. That's, that's normally my bit. Down below. So, okay, so number one, it says, what inspires you to become a fitness coach and nutritionist? That's <sighs> a great question. Honestly, um, people don't believe me when I say this, but when I was at school, I absolutely hated PE. I never did any type of fitness when I was younger. One of my earliest memories is um, being taken to ballet by my mum because, as she put it, I used to run around the house like an elephant and she wanted me to be ladylike and dainty. Um, so I remember going to ballet, I remember to do gymnastics, and the lady used me as a demonstration person on the, the bars, you know, those parallel bars, mm -hmm. and she dropped me on my hips, and I'm like, never doing gymnastics again. Are you still crash around the house like a... Apparently so. Either. Apparently I'm heavy-handed and heavy-footed. Heavy-footed. Yes. Um, so that was one of my earliest memories. I really, really wasn't uh, encouraged by the family to, to be fit. Um, or you know take up uh, sports and activities it's just the family that we grew up in and then when I left school um, I went into being a legal secretary and I studied and worked in London with a uh, numerous different firms there and I guess it was then that I started to think mm, I can't sit still and I can't be quiet all day and I wanted <laughs> to move my body was craving movement uh, so from there I um, just decided to, I'm going to go and be an aerobic instructor probably had only ever done a handful of aerobic classes in my life and then I was like right joined the gym uh, actually, I um, volunteered at a gym to go and help out on the floor whilst doing my aerobics instructor qualifications, and then it just just went from there. Um, you know, gym instructor, personal trainer, step instructor, like the Les Mills, like everything. I did the the full, gosh, oh, so many different qualifications. If anyone has a certificate, it's, yeah. it's Claire loves a certificate. I do love a certificate. Um, and a medal or a, <laughs> a trophy. Uh, yeah, she, she's doing the course pretty much. Yeah, and then, so that was all the fitness side of things. And mm. then um, the nutrition, it just goes hand in hand. Always had an interest in food, always had, uh, you know, an interest in, in how to heal with food. Uh, and I guess after, um, like, I lost my mum at 26 through cancer. And then from that, that was a real push. It's like, you know, you can live disease free. There's different ways that you should be living to make sure that you are healthy. 
Um, and I guess that was a real big catalyst for driving me forward to, mm. to make sure that no one else had to suffer a loss like that as well. Why now? What's your influence now? What, what do you enjoy most about the job? Hmm. Do you know what I love? I love feeling fit myself I love being an inspiration to show people what's possible um, you know frequently I, people don't believe that like I'm, I'm now 45 so they're like but how can you be you know I'm a, I'm a busy mum obviously a wife and have a family we spend, I'm low maintenance so <laughs> um, you know I have a business I'm working mm. but it's the energy that I have that's what motivates me and you know I want to look good I want to feel good uh, and, and that inspires me every day to do what I want to do and be able to have new challenges and be a good healthy role model I guess for our son as well so yeah I think for me it's the same kind of thing my background is slightly different I, I was brought up with my father who at 16 17 was bodybuilding in the in the garage um, so he was always a very what I would call a man's man so I was very much brought up with that sort of role model of someone that's strong I guess so I was always kind of into sport and playing golf and rugby and football and everything else. So I was always brought into that. Then I joined the forces, so it's all been, always been physically fit. But I think that what's influenced me or what, what's why I want to become more what I do what I do is because I like to see the results that people get. Mm. Um, we, I always say that we believe actually more in our clients than the, than the clients believe in themselves. Um, just this morning, I had two clients that had never deadlifted before, both women. Um, we did an hour of technique and they were both lifting body weight. Awesome. So for me, properly, pro yeah. properly, <laughs> yeah, properly. properly. Not, not a hex bar, not on a sumo, a proper straightforward strict deadlift for doubles and they were both doing um, over body weight. So when I see that, that's massive. Last week I had two guys that were struggling with five kilo preacher curls. They both entered the 30 kilo club. Um, so they're now doing 30 kilos for reps. So when I see that, I get a massive buzz of it. And the, the loudest noise in the gym is probably me. Cheering them on. <laughs> when they're doing it. So I think that's... Yeah. You and agree I, with that? You know, I definitely agree with that. And it's once you see the light bulb go off and the look on your client's face when they've achieved something that they didn't think that was possible mm. and that you've been helping them with, like, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it is big, it is big isn't it? Mm. Uh, number two, can you share some common misconceptions about fitness nutrition that you encounter? <laughs> just go on Instagram right? or YouTube yeah so many go on uh, a McDonald's diet for 30 days um, the biggest misconception is that the question yeah, uh, yeah. the most common uh, misconception about fitness, nutri fitness nutrition that you can, you can lose weight quickly mm. um, crash diets simply don't work they're not sustainable they're not healthy they just don't work the other big misconception that I have with a lot of people that I work with um, particularly women is that weightlifting is going to make you big and bulky uh 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 that's a whole separate video we'll do on that. Um, weights are the best thing that women can do of all ages. So that's we just lost the light. So yeah. if, we, if we, there's no one behind the camera. So if it looks a bit weird, apologise. Yeah. Um, and that, and then it's uh, what's the, that it's. Um, I guess a lot of people they find it that they don't have the time or it's too hard. And you know we do a lot of mindset coaching around training with people uh, to help them you know, look at their priorities and show them, identify different things that probably potentially where they're holding themselves back. Mm. And then once they um, unlock those, then the, the full steam head they can Limiting go. beliefs. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> How do you approach, um, I would say the same, don't really believe what you're watching on YouTube, even mm -hmm. though go and research what we're saying. Once you've done your own fact check um, and then follow that person and, uh, yeah, they'll give you the, the advice that's best for you there's so many misconceptions it really are and I think for now I mean when our, our, our son's been brought up with it but you know for him to kind of get into the fitness industry now I think he'd be quite confused really mm. of, of what things are going on um, it's quite funny we, we see influencers and, and people coming through and they're saying the same things that we would talk 20 years ago so the actual advice is still solid it's still there it's just yeah. packaged in a different way a lot more now yeah and I think it's important to remember that biomechanically your body your skeleton your muscles haven't changed mm. the way that we used to train you know back in the days of like Arnie and all those big yeah. bodybuilding days the fundamental compound lifts and actually lifting to intensity on a progressive overload rant 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 that, is, that actually works right 100% <laughs> it works you know and whether, whether or not you're supplementing or even even anabolically steroid wise you know they've all done it you know with what we're doing in terms of some of the real crazy chemicals that are around now these psalms and everything else the guys have been doing it 20, 30 years ago. 
you know, we're, we're using steroids now that were developed in the 40s and 50s. So there's nothing, nothing new. It's just repackaged, I think. So mm. do your research. I think that's the, that's the big thing. Yeah, make an informed choice no matter what you decide to do. Number three is a bit of a, a difficult one. I think. It says, how do you approach creating personalized fitness and nutrition plans for your clients? Can I lead on that one? Sure, sure. Uh, get a baseline. I think that's the biggest thing is that, you know, if you get a baseline of a client of what they can and can't do. So take them around the gym um, or get them to lift some weights at home and get a base on of what they can and can't do in terms of number of reps, how heavy, how progressive, and everything else. We both believe in progressive overload. It's not new. It's been around 50, 60, 80 years. I invented years. it. It's my uh, idea. <laughs> progressive overload. You know, So every single day or every single week or every single cycle you're in, you're going to progressively overload. Um, I, I do a thing game. called uh, as a Spartan 28-day challenge. And every single, uh, every four days, you cycle round and you go 2% increase. I can't program you to be 2% increase if I don't know what your baseline is. Mm. So in terms of how I program, which is very similar to what Claire does as well. Claire does my guys nutrition and my girls nutrition because I'm not a qualified nutritionist, but she is. Um, but even the, even the um, nutrition isn't all a progressive bias. So that you need a baseline first. Well, yeah, because you need to work out what the person's goals are, you know, what their activity levels are, all of that, and actually understanding how much drive they have, what their want is, and, you know, what their barriers are to achieving it. And then identifying all of those different areas that could then create the plan that's going to work for them. And the key is also to make sure that it integrates easily into their lifestyle. So, you know, what I potentially might design for a client as a blueprint it's it's kind of like the ideal but if it's a journey to get them there and they kind of fall off the path a little mm. bit like that's okay because if they're still making a, a one small change every day to get closer to the ideal then they're on the right track mm. yeah and then don't be so don't be so down if you yeah. have a cheat day or you have an extra glass of wine or you don't train you don't eat don't beat yourself up over it you'll mm. catch up so and never start good. on a monday just start today never start on a monday today or the first. Yeah. Sort of <laughs> um, number four is a really cool one. It says, what role does mindset play in achieving fitness and nutrition goals? Uh, well, it's massive. Without the right mindset, you're not going to have the determination, the mm. discipline, the drive, or the desire, or, or the want to, to push through. Because, you know, exercise can be uncomfortable. Not everyone likes slogging themselves out, but then people think they have to slog themselves out. So it's finding something that you enjoy. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to say that's slightly different. My, my approach is slightly different to Claire's. So my clients do slog themselves out. Yeah. So I, I teach more of that probably aggressive way. I think they psych themselves up to come to your Yeah, sessions. they're like, Jesus, I've got tiny necks. Right, I've, got, <laughs> I've got to give it 100%. Yeah. I say to all my clients right at the very start, if you can't give me 100% of your time in a session, don't come to the session. Because I will give you 100% of my time, and I expect them to work. And I always hear, I've got a sore arm, I can't do this. I go, yeah, 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 and let's keep them going. I know that client after a certain time, whether that their arm's hurting because it's called exercise or if they have an injury and we'll sustain mm. that. So, and I'll push you more than you'll be able to push yourself. So you say, oh, that way, I, I teach it slightly different. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. But same, same results. Oh, the oh, other light's the other gone. Camera, <laughs> oh, that's so gone. We're probably in darkness, but we're going to keep on going anyway Yeah, who knows now. what this looks like now. Um, what body part do you like training best in the gym? Oh, can you guess? Go onto my Instagram and see which muscle part of mine that you see the most. It's back and shoulders for me, all the way. What would you say mine is? Oh, you love your arms. Look, <laughs> look at these arms. No, Sorry, I can't. <laughs> to be honest, I, I, I hate training legs. Mm. But they're probably my strongest. Yeah, and you respond so quickly. Really quick. So I don't normally train legs. Or if I do, I do maybe one session a month. I'm now on a <laughs> I'm now on a three three yeah three three times a week I train legs at the moment. It's not fair. One session a month for his legs. I'll do two a week to try and build mine. What's the worst body part? For me? Yeah. <laughs> legs. I don't mind legs. I'm not that great at mm, not that great at squats. Okay, so there's probably exercise, yeah. But I, I do like training legs, just not squats. What's mine? You hate training chest. Chest. I naturally don't have a great chest, um, which annoys the hell out of me because my best mate Jay, he has an amazing chest um, and doesn't really have to work at it. You know, he says, can you squat me doing 150 kilo chest for five? And I'm like, 
Dude, that's like one max, one rep max. Uh, so yeah, I don't like chest, but you know, we'll keep on going. I don't like going swimming on chest day. No. You're just grumpy that day. I'm very grumpy on chest day. <laughs> <laughs> very grumpy. Okay, can you... Uh, no, we've done that one. Yeah. What are some effective strategies for staying motivated and consistent with a fitness and nutrition regime? That's an awesome question. Uh, speak to one of us and we'll keep you accountable. I think accountability is a big thing. We, we train each other and so people sometimes think that's weird, but I know when she's looking saggy or she's not doing the right thing and we're very brutally honest with each other. And so we, we do keep each other in, yeah. in accountability. Like, oh, you're not going to the gym today? I'm like, no, I'm not really feeling that. She went, are you really sure you're not going to go to the gym today? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm really uh, tired. I'm like, you might want to go to the gym today. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to the gym today. So I, I probably slack off more than you do. Yeah, I'm very disciplined with my – because I, I enjoy it and I like – I have it as my own time. And I like – what I should start again. What I don't like is not feeling authentic as mm. a, a fitness professional. And I don't feel it's a good thing to not be training or have the training routine for myself mm. and then expect that of my clients. Like integrity is massive for me. So that's why I, I, I'm such a massive advocate for it. And I've got my different training goals that excite me and make me want to go to the gym. That's true. I probably tell you off more to do with takeaways. That's really what I'm like. Yeah. Do you want that? I, I, I meal Can prep for you. Can we just actually define takeaways? It's not all bad. It's, no. I eat a lot of maybe Turkish type food, so mm. it's very, very clean food anyway so i'm not eating burgers all the time <laughs> cheeky mcdonald's now and again um but because i'm more of the bulk sort of size thing i can burn that off really quick mm. and it's the same with training if i miss a training day because i'm feeling tired the way i train is is fairly extreme mm. so if i know i'm not going to be at 70 or 80 percent effort i probably there's no point in going for yeah. me so and that's very, very few people that train like that. Very few. I mean, like Claire and I, if we're doing like leg day together, we'll do stupid stuff like 200 reps for calves times four sets. And she'll go, well, why don't we do five sets then? And then we'll then we're doing a thousand reps before we know it. So we egg each other on <laughs> badly sometimes. Yeah. Well, there's some pretty things in most in, in most of the life we egg each other on. So yeah, I would say having accountability is a massive thing. Um, it's also about personalities, people's different personalities. If you have an addictive personality or someone that really doesn't like cheating themselves and you have a goal, you go, do you know what, I have to go to the gym because I'm just cheating myself. So it's what you're saying about being authentic, I mm. think. Um, and some people don't train like that. I think you'll find your own way. Mm. I think that's the thing. I think the key is to understanding why you're doing it and what you want from it. Yeah, I think that's, that's really good. Uh, I think this is number seven. Yes. How do you adapt fitness nutrition plans for individuals? Uh, oh God, this is a clear, with specific dietary restrictions or health concerns. Mm, we've it's kind a, of answered that. Yeah, we have kind of answered that. But it's a very unique, bespoke thing as well. You know, it's having a look at what the specific dietary requirements are for that person. What's the, you know, are they intolerant to something or do they just not like something? Uh, are there certain, you know, like I used to um, work with someone who. Uh, was a dentist and so they weren't able to drink water you know because they were with their patients all day so it's like trying to work out okay what are your restrictions around work or family um to make sure that we can get your nutrition on point as best as we can mm. um you know it's it's easy you talk to the person you find out what their uh, restrictions are and then you make the necessary adaptations from there i think it's like it's like what i was saying about how do we do it in terms of creating a program it's finding a baseline so finding out what you can and can't do. There's been so many times I've seen programs that are coming through and it goes, free nutrition plan. And I look at that nutrition plan and go, well, I'm not going to eat any of that. It's not the way I eat. Mm. Um, or, you know, I don't particularly like vegetables. Um, I don't particularly like, what's that other thing I don't like? Quinoa. Quinoa. Well, that's just like dust. Uh, I don't particularly like rice. I love pasta. So for me, when it says 125 grams of rice, Claire knows that I'm going to be like, oh, God, here we go. And I'm having to force it in. Normally, light mayonnaise does the trick. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's finding a baseline, mm. I think, and then adjusting to there. When we work one-to-one -one with clients, it, it's very, very different than doing group um, because it's obviously personalized and everything is bespoke, so we, we'll spend a lot of time. Um, one thing I would say as well, whether it's us or whether it's other people that train you, please be respectful of your of your trainer and your coach as well, because 
what you don't see is that you'll have your your interview with them. You'll maybe go and do a bit of a gym induction, everything else, and then there'll be nothing, and then you'll then get this program just turn up. You know, we don't just pull it off the internet. It takes us. It takes me probably three to five mm. hours to write a program because it's going to be progressively overloaded. Mm. And then when you then don't come up for a session or you're supposed to do a session outside of our time that we program for you. So let's say we have clients that are doing three or four sessions a week that train with us twice. It's your responsibility to go and train for those two other days. Yeah. If you skip them, that's half of your workout program gone in a week. And then you're not going to get the And then results. how am I going to get you to progress forward onto that without massively overloading you? Fear of injury, fear of strain, fear of you know dropping off the wagon. So, you know, bear in mind it does take a long time sometimes, doesn't it? Mm. And you're the same with nutrition. Yeah, I was going to say that one of the biggest things that I'll always do with my clients is to get the baseline of where they're at. Like I, I want to know what their eating habits mm. are now and also how they used to eat as a child because then that shows you their relationships with food and their belief systems around yeah. like their eating habits and how ingrained they are. And I always get them to do a food diary. Um, you know, for people who don't like writing it down, it's like take a photo of your food, plate it up, send it to me, and then I can see what they're eating, can see what they're used to. And then from there, that I guess that's my baseline to start making changes of where I know that they should be heading towards. And we all know you lie. We all know you absolutely lie. Oh, and you have three glasses of wine a week. You're lying. We know you don't have three glasses a week because we check your Instagram, we check your Facebook page, and you're out every night. And you're like, <laughs> you've had three glasses of wine on that lunchtime session. So people do lie. You know what? And you know when you're talking about coffee, I had three coffees. Okay, three coffees. That could be fifteen hundred calories. Yeah, that's a whole other video, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you've already done one on yeah, that. But, but yeah, so be honest with it because otherwise, it's like I've had guys so I can do a two twenty deadlift. I'm like, okay, and then I'd get them to do something else, and they struggle to do 40 kilo bench. And I'm like, mm, okay, realistically, I know it's a different body part, but if you're doing a 220 bench, a 220 deadlift, you're probably going to do at least a 140 squat, at least, and I'd like to see you do at least 60 to 80 kilo bench. That's normally the numbers. And if you can't do a 40 kilo bench, you ain't doing 220 deadlift. <laughs> very, very rare. So be honest, I guess. Yeah. Me, yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's it. You know, because we. We don't judge with any of our clients. We just we'll need to understand. Out. Well, we just want to understand what we're working with. Yeah, That's exactly. all. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the relationship between exercise? Oh, that's a good one. Relationship between exercise, nutrition, and recovery. So food is probably the thing that holds all of that together. If you're not eating correctly, you're not going to be able to have the energy to go and perform properly in the gym. You know, what you put in your body is fuel can impact you to make you feel tired, sluggish, or, you know, energized and ready to go for a workout. Um, if you then don't eat properly or the right food afterwards, your body's not going to have the fuel that it needs to then do those building blocks to recover and, you know, put the energy back into your body. Like, that's mm. the simplest terms I, I can give. I'll um, go on that and say it's actually cyclic. Yeah. So very much food first, because mm -hmm. then that's going to give you the fuel to go and work your balls off in the gym. Yeah. Go and do a real hard session. It doesn't need to be heavy. It's just a concentration thing. So giving it 100%. Mm, when you're like 100%, focus, yeah. discipline. Yeah. Really focused, really mm -hmm. disciplined. Really disciplined. And then once you've done that, then that will also then give you the catalyst that you want to sleep and want to recover. Mm. And then if you have a good sleep and you want to recover, you'll get up and you'll want to be hungry. Yeah. And, and the good food <laughs> will also help your recovery yeah. by putting you in the right state so that you can sleep deeper as well so that they're, they're all linked in yeah, um you know and it's, it's that classic old one isn't it it's like your abs are made in the kitchen and all of 100%. this so, you know that that's just one example we get um, i get clients say oh well, i want to look zach efron i'm like yeah i'm sure you do but zach efron doesn't have a burger curry and is out with the mates on the gear and probably having too many drinks yeah. at the weekend mm. so be honest with yourself i can give you a fat zach efron yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to be able to do it. It's, you know, we're very, very truthful, very honest. So mm. can't give, I can give you Zach Efron light, but we're still going to have to work really, really hard. You know, and we're very honest with that. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's very much, we always say, abs are, in the, are formed in the kitchen, literally. Um, a little it, bit of work yeah, everything else. It's, everything's, you know. Mm. Okay. How do you address plateaus or setbacks in a client's fitness and nutrition program? That's a great one. Um, Depends on the plat plateaus. It's if, where you become stagnant and you're not progressing. You're not going to progress forward. Which 
means that you haven't changed anything up. That's why we talk about mm. the form of like progressive that's overload. You know, that's why we do program reviews. That's why you don't just get a one size fits all. Mm. You know, we structure our programs so they are progressive. There's um, changes to allow for that adaptation to occur. Um, and then we also put a recovery phase into it as well. So it gives you that um, mental rest from it because then that can also lead to plateaus. So that's kind of probably, that that's easy to, to identify and overcome. We just mix it up regularly after a period of time. Yes. With the plateau, so because we do this progressive overload, which isn't new, um, your first week is your maximum effort. And then you'll then progressively go lower in the weight, but you'll be doing more reps from that. I personally do a six or a 12 week program, which is classed as two phases. At the end of the sixth week, you go into what's called a deload week, which is our, our in effect, our resting week. So the, the weight is way less, the reps are really slow, because guess what? Everyone loves deload week, but they don't like the week after deload week, mm. because it's, you're back on it, and that gives your body a chance to completely de-stress, cortisol levels, mindset, everything else, getting you focused on what right, I'm going to enjoy this rep because mm. it's nothing it's easy I'm just doing it because next week when I come back into the gym I'm smashing all my goals yeah it's PRs or PPs you know we call them PBs it's in PB. my day we're old. A PB, not it's PRs. PB. <laughs> um, um, in terms of setbacks then you know they normally like setbacks if, if you're training something's come up you've missed mm. a session we just try and fit it in somewhere else um, you know, if you have a setback from injury, then it's just trying to work out how you rehabilitate yeah, from that. Much, if yeah. you have a setback with your nutrition, um, then it's just identifying. What is it, what's a setback to nutrition? It means you pick like, out. Like yeah. binge eating or yeah. overeating. But you know what? Life happens and we, you know, live by an 80 20 rule. If 80% of the time you're all good and it allows for 20%. So it's again having a better mindset around your eating habits so you don't feel like it's restricted so then you don't go and like trying to eat everything all at once and you know yeah. what who doesn't have a little bit of cake and going out for dinner seriously we do we're going away in a couple of weeks yeah all inclusive can't wait we're gonna look great for four days at the beginning of that holiday <laughs> that's where all the instagram photographs and all the recordings are going to do and you'll probably be able to guess what Speak week period or what do. i'm terrible on holiday you know i'm on holiday we do train on holiday which people think we're mad but we I like do to move. Eat. Yeah. You know, I do it. We both don't drink, so that's not really a big deal. Um, but we will eat. Yep. With our little boy, he loves mm. to eat as well. So. All right, last question. Um, what are the top tips for maintaining a healthy lifestyle and long-term relationship? No, it just says healthy lifestyle long term. <laughs> That's a whole other video, long term relationship. Long term relationship, oh God. Um, I okay. won't on that one. Uh, uh, what are uh, the top tips for maintaining a healthy lifestyle? Healthy lifestyle, healthy lifestyle long term easy make it a habit that's the easiest way you can do it so you that's make a it a really easy question to say i mean sorry it's a really easy answer yeah, to say answer to give. it's really freaking hard to do yeah but if ultimately you're, you're having a look at you know what things do you enjoy to do remembering why you want to do them once you start to feel better and you start to feel fitter you naturally enjoy the process of doing it more and it's, you know, setting your time out and, and making it a priority to get your training sessions in um, each week. And then it, like, it's consistency over time that really does start to create that habit. Um, yeah. But can it I, is can hard I give to an start. example? A really, yeah. it's, a, it's a personal example as well. It's Claire's brother. So Claire's a twin. She's a better looking one. And he started october november time yeah, last year november, november. can i come to the gym and we're like yeah sure so we, we came to the gym and we did a couple of training sessions with me did a couple of training sessions with you and then he worked in as a three together and we were like let's just see what happens and then he he said can you do me a program so i said yep did him a program and he's followed that program when he does have the time to work out mm. and this is, the, this is a good example of this yeah he does it to the letter, which is really good. He, so he's quite fanatical about that. His weights were really low. He was getting himself down. He would hate training with me because I'd do like five times the weight or whatever. And I'm like, Pete, I've been doing it five times longer than you have at least. And now where we're at into sort of uh, March, six, April, six. April, May time, yeah, yeah, he doesn't do every single training program as prescribed because of his job. So that's a really good example of, of how he's motivating himself mm. through that. He's then starting to get his diet on point because his diet's terrible, and he's now even thinking about giving up smoking or vaping, mm -hmm. which is really good. But all of that came from him. Mm. 
And so he then start doing one session a week, and he'd be like, "Damn it, I missed that session." So he then do two sessions a week. Yeah. Now he'll finish at stupid times in the morning, stupid times at late at night. He will travel like three hundred miles, and he'll drive straight to the gym. He has gym stuff in the back yeah. of the car now. So it is habit mm. forming, but realistically, how do you do it? You have to want to do it. Yeah. We can't make. Well, we can. We can but make you no do longevity. it. But you won't do it. You will not stay with us as a client. And actually, there's another video here. We call it the client divorce. Is that we don't want to work with people that don't put the effort as we do it. Mm. So the thing about uh, my brother as well is the the milestones for him because he used to pay on a guest pass to, to go into the gym yeah, that's true, um, and then he used to go in and train only with you that's right and then uh he then brought a gym membership and, and he'd never ever done that in his whole life he used to come to my spin classes back in australia and he used to hate it yeah. um so then he's, he's like i've joined the gym because he was going that many times it was, <laughs> it was actually the more yeah. affordable option wasn't it and now it's a that, thing's yeah, like that, he's like he's one of the guys that joined the 30k club we'll talk about um Preacher curls and stuff. Yeah. I remember, and he won't mind me saying it, he started off with five kilos, could not do a five kilo preacher curl, mm. and now he's up to 32 kilos yeah. in six months. And he's not doing every single, he probably do, he's doing at least two sessions a week now, but he's now going, do you know what? I can see my shoulders coming in, and he's a big lad, you know, he, he, would, he would be really good shape. Mm. He's now like, well, actually, maybe if I adjust my diet somewhat. Yeah, it, it's motivated him to want to do more. And he's mm. the other milestone was when he started going to the gym on his own. It was like, yeah, he's got it now. Mm. But, you know, it's like we said, it took about six months. So you've just got to keep pushing through those struggles and setting yourself up to, so that you can go, you know, remove the barriers um, that are potentially going to stop you going. So, mm. you know, like he said, he has stuff in the car, so he goes straight to the gym rather than going yeah. home because then you don't go out. Like prioritizing at the start of the week, what days are going to be your training days? You know, think about where you're going to be eating, what you're going to be doing. Start to have that forward thinking, and then it becomes easier to do. And then you start having those small little wins all the way. So it just mm. helps to get you there quicker. So when Claire says make it a habit, it's very true. But how do you make it that habit? Yeah. That's that's your journey. That's the beauty of it. I, I still remember the day that Pete said, "Hey Glenn, do you want a protein shake?" And I just went, <laughs> "Yeah, of course." So yeah, those little wins. Mm. So that's that's the ten. That was it. That was hard. Ooh. This is hard being in front of this side. Ah, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> so do you want to? Do you want? Shall I do it? Shall you, I do the you wrap can, it up? You can wrap up for me. So if you found this video useful, please remember to like and consider subscribing to the Naked Warriors channel. All of the links of everything we've talked about in terms of Claire's program and my bits and pieces will be in the description below. below. There are probably two videos coming up here or here for other <laughs> videos that we're liking, or maybe not. Um, Depends what he does with the editing. Yeah, to be fair. maybe. Uh, whatever else. Uh, make sure you follow Claire on social media and and you and me, but mommy. And <laughs> no. is that a wrap? I think that's a wrap. And so we'll see you From on the next, next one. one. <laughs> <laughs> right.